Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode 35, we are going to focus questions based on Azure Resource Group, Management Group, and then some questions on OPEX and a host of other topics. Read the questions with me, pause the video, try to pick your answer and validate against my answers. And I will give you insights on many Azure concepts today. Power packed episode is coming up, so let's begin. So here comes the very first question for the part number 35. Question number 661 says, a company is planning on deploying resources to a resource group within Microsoft Azure. The company is planning on assigning tags to the resource groups and you have to tell would the resources in the resource group also inherit the same tags? So basically the question is asking you when you create a resource group within Microsoft Azure and you assign some tags on the resource group level, then would the resources within that resource group also inherit those tags? Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is no. And the reason is very simple. Resources in the resource groups do not inherit the same tax. So now you might be thinking, is there anything that the resource inherit from the resource groups? Let's check out in the next question. Question number 662 says, a company is planning on deploying resources to a resource group within Microsoft Azure. The company is planning on assigning permissions to the resource group. Please mind the difference my friends. This time we are talking about permissions. In the last question, we were talking about the tags. Further, the question says, would the resources within the resource group also inherit the same permissions? Yes or no? And this time my friends, the correct answer is yes. So unlike the tags, resources in the resource groups inherit the same permissions. Question number 663 says, a management group tree can support up to dash level of depth. The options given are, 2, 4, 6 or 8 and the correct answer for this question is option C, 6 level of depth. Now let's take the next question and then I will take you to the Microsoft documentation and then we will validate this and the next question together. So here comes the question number 664. It says how many management groups can be supported in a single directory? Your options are 100. The second option is 1000. Third option is 10,000 and the last option, option D is 1 lakh or 100,000. And the correct answer for this question is option C, 10,000. Now let's validate our answer, question number 663 and 664. So here, first of all, you can read what are the management groups here. So here you can read that if your organization has many Azure subscriptions, you may need a way to efficiently manage access policies and compliance for those subscriptions. Management groups provides a governance scope about subscriptions and you can organize subscriptions into management groups. The governance condition, you apply cascade by inheritance to all the associated subscriptions. And now I have come to this section which says important facts about the management groups. It is under the same documentation. Here you can read the very first line. It says 10,000 management groups can be supported in a single directory. And that validates the answer for the question number 664. Further on, it says a management group tree can support six level of depth. And that validates question number 663. And of course, you can also read the other facts about the management group. You never know, questions can change in the AZ-900 exam. So better be prepared. Moving on with the next question, question number 665. It says each management group and the subscriptions can only support one parent. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. And you can validate the answer using the same documentation that I just showed. Moving on with the question number 666, it says the company is planning to set up a solution on the Azure platform. The solution has the following main key requirement, provide a management service. So basically this is the requirement. It says provide a managed service that could be used to manage and scale container based application. Which of the following would be best suited for this requirement? Now friends, please think for a moment what could be the best answer or best option for this question. Because we have talked about this service many times in the previous question. So I am sure you have already picked the answers. But before I reveal the answer, let's check out the options given. We have Azure Event Grid. Azure DevOps, Azure Kubernetes and Azure Dev Test Labs. And the correct answer is, wait, 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 what is your correct answer? I hope you're not cheating. The correct answer for this question is option C, Azure Kubernetes. Keep these associations in your mind whenever we are talking about container based applications. 
Azure Kubernetes is the option to go for. Moving on with the question number 667, it says building a data center infrastructure is an example of operational expenditure or OPEX cost true or false and the correct answer for this question is false because building a data center infrastructure that involves a huge upfront cost and upfront cost is always categorized as capital expenditure and not operational expenditure and now comes question number 668 it says monthly salaries of the technical personnel are an example of operational cost or operational expenditure true or false and this time my friends this is a true statement and now comes question number 669 it says leasing software is an example of operational expenditure cost true or false and this is a true statement so as i have explained in many previous questions as well let's revise once more it says that opex or operational cost is an ongoing cost which is the cost of operations so please keep this segregation of cost in your mind ongoing cost or cost of operations this means that you are incurring cost on the day-to-day -day operations that are essential for you to run the business so ongoing costs such as leasing software but on the contrary opposite of leasing software is purchase of softwares and that is one of purchases and in that case that would be categorized as capital expenditure so please keep that in mind whenever it's leasing of software it is operational expenditure whenever it's purchase of software it is capital expenditure and friends i thank all the viewers who pointed out this mistake in the question number 120 part 7 so in that question although we gave the correct explanation but mistakenly we marked the answer as false but then now you know that this is a true statement so thank you all the viewers who brought this to our notice now let's move on to the question number 670 which is a slight variation of the same previous question it says a company is leasing software which category would the following expenses come under your options are primary expenditure capital expenditure the third option is secondary expenditure and then we have operating or operational expenditure and now you know the correct answer is option d operating or operational expenditure and here comes the question number 671 it says which of the following is true when it comes to SaaS or software as a service your options are you are responsible for scalability of the solution option b is you are responsible for deploying the solution option c is that you are responsible for configuring the solution and option d is that you are responsible for high availability of the solution and the correct answer for this question is option c that you are responsible for configuring the solution because the scalability the deployment and the high availability all these factors are taken care by microsoft azure a simple example to understand SaaS or software as a service is gmail or any other mail service that you use do you ever care about the deployment where it is deployed which servers are used no never do you ever care about the high availability of gmail or any other mail service never you as a user you're only concerned about the configuration of the solution or configuration of your email services and other than that everything is taken care by the email provider Let's move on to the next question. Question number 672 says that what are the additional dependent resources that an Azure virtual machine must have? You have to select the two options. Your options are option A, public IP, option B, Azure virtual network, option C, data disk. And lastly, we are given with NIC or network interface card. And the two correct options for this question is option B, Azure virtual network and option D, NIC card. So just like a physical computer, Azure Virtual Machines also needs a network. It also needs a NIC card, operating system disk and resource groups to function. So now let's quickly jump to the question number 673. It says a company wants to migrate some scripts to Microsoft Azure. They want to make use of the serverless feature available in Azure. The solution provided is that they decide to use Azure Virtual Machine service. Would this meet the requirement? Yes or no? And the correct answer is no because Azure Virtual Machine gives the flexibility of virtualization without having to buy and maintain the physical hardware that runs it. However, you still need to maintain the virtual machine by performing tasks such as configuring, patching and installing the software that runs on it. 
And of course, please note Azure Virtual Machine definitely are not the serverless features. So let's move to the next question and find out what are the serverless feature available in Microsoft Azure. So here comes question number 674 question exactly the same. But this time solution says that they decide to use Azure function service. Would this service meet the requirement? Yes or no? And most definitely this is the correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer because Azure functions is a serverless compute service that lets you run event triggered code without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. So that's why Azure functions fits this business requirement. But let me show you one more variation of the same question. Here it comes question number 675 question once again the same. But this time the solution presented is that they decide to use Azure content delivery network service. Would this service meet the requirement? Yes or no? And most definitely this is not the correct service. But in case you do not know what is Azure Content Delivery Network Service? Well, Azure Content Delivery Network Service or better known as CDN is a distributed network of servers that can efficiently deliver web contents to the users. A CDN store cache content on edge servers in point of presence or POP locations that are close to the end users and thereby they minimize latency. And with that, we jump to the question number 676. It says, is the cool access tier a good option for long term backup? Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because archive tier. Well, that's the best tier that you can use for long term backups. Data in the archive tier should be stored for at least or minimum of 180 days. On the other hand, the cool access tier. Well, in this tier, you have to store the data for a minimum time period of 30 days. So you can see 30 days versus 180 days. That's why archive tier is best for the long term backups. Moving on with the question number 677. It says Azure storage capacity limits are set at account level. Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is yes. So as this is the lesser talked concept, let me validate the answer on the Microsoft documentation. Here is the documentation and here in this section, you can very well read that Azure storage capacity limits are set at account level rather than according to the access tier. And that's why we have picked yes as the answer to this question. Now let's move on to the question number 678. It says which of the following blob option in Azure storage is idle for storing text or binary files and for uploading large files. Your options are block blobs, append blobs or page blobs. And what is your correct answer? Well, my correct answer is option A block blobs. So would you like to validate the answer? Let's do that. So here on this documentation, you can read it says overview of Azure page blobs. It says Azure storage offers three types of blob storage. The first one is block blobs. The second one is append blobs. And thirdly, we have page blobs. And then it says block blobs are composed of blocks and are idle for storing text or binary files and for uploading large files efficiently. And that's why block blobs is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. Question number 679 says a company wants to provision a solution within Microsoft Azure with the following requirements. The first one is provision a WordPress solution. The second one is host the solution on a virtual machine. Which of the following could be used to quickly deploy the above solution? Your options are virtual machine scale sets. The second option is Azure resource group. Thirdly, we have Azure marketplace and fourthly, we have Azure web apps. And the correct answer for this question is option C Azure Marketplace. So friends Azure Marketplace is an online store that offers applications and services either built on or designed to integrate with Microsoft Azure public cloud. So as an analogy consider Google Play Store or Apple App Store where you find different applications with various capabilities. So similarly Azure Marketplace is an online store where you can buy or even get a free try on to many of the applications or the solution already pre built. So a great place to explore and efficiently save your time and efforts. And now we have question number 680. It says which of the following are the factors that affect the compute cost of the virtual machine and you have to choose two options and the options given are the size of the virtual machine. The option B is the data center the virtual machine is located in and then we have the resource group the virtual machine is located in and lastly the region the virtual machine is located in and the correct answer for this question is option A the size of the virtual machine and option D the region of the virtual machine is located in. 
So that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in for the today's Azure question and answer video. I hope you find it useful in your journey to mastering Microsoft Azure. And be sure to check out the links in the description box for more resources and information. Any doubts? Let me know in the comment section. And please friends, hit that like button to make Mr. YouTube happy and help us reach more audience just like you. Press the subscribe button, choose the all option so that you are notified and you're always top of your Azure learnings. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.